four minute video on Nelson Mandela defending his friendship with Castro and the people. Wow. Now that sounds like a video that we should watch. Let us move on to our next I have seen this video actually. This is an amazing video. Uh, thank you for. Let us move on to our next questioner at the microphone over there, Mr. Adelman. Welcome to America, Mr. Mandela. I'm Ken Edelman. Those of us who share your struggle for human rights and against apartheid have been somewhat disappointed by the models of human rights that you have held up since being released in jail. You've met over the last six months three times with Yasser Arafat, who you have praised. You have told Gaddafi that you should. Arafat was a Palestinian socialist leader um, who the U.S. did everything they could to destroy. Uh, yeah. Share the view on, and applaud him on his record of human rights and his drive for freedom and peace around the world. And you have praised Fidel Castro as a leader of human rights and said that Cuba was one of the countries that's head and shoulders above all other countries in human rights despite the fact that documents of the United Nations and elsewhere show that Cuba is one of the worst. I was just wondering, are these your models of leaders of human rights? And if so, would you want a Gaddafi or an Arafat or a Castro to be a future president of South Africa? One of the mistakes which some political analysts make is to think that they are enemies should be our enemies. Wow. And someone in the chat was talking earlier about how all these countries are going against the U.S.'s sanctions on Russia um, and how countries are saying, no, we are dependent on Russia for energy, um, so we're going to continue to trade with them rather than just going along with the U.S.'s sanctions uh, because the U.S. said so, you know, because those sanctions are going to hurt our own economies. Um, and you're seeing countries more and more willing are more and more willing to stand up for themselves and say, no, your enemies are not our enemies. We are not just a puppet of the U.S. And that's basically what Nelson Mandela just said that to that Western uh, reporter journalist right there. That journalist is basically saying, OK, yeah, we get it. You ended apartheid. That's cool. But why are you supporting all these socialists? Why are you supporting all these communists? Why are you supporting these enemies of the U.S. State Department, is what he's saying, in, in essence. Why are you not supporting imperialism, is his critique of Mandela. And Mandela says, hey, buddy, your enemies are not our enemies. I am no puppet of, of the U.S. State Department who's going to hate on Cuba and Palestine and Libya um, because whatever neoliberal leader of the U.S. said that we should. that we can and we will never do. We have our own struggle, which we are conducting. We are grateful to the world for supporting our struggle. But nevertheless, we are an independent organization with its own policy. And the attitude of every country towards our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle. And that's such a genius way to think about politics and, and be a non-interventionist which is so foreign to the way that the West thinks, right? The West thinks these, these certain countries, Cuba, um, uh, Libya, whatever else, are bad. 
these are bad countries, and anybody who doesn't agree that they're bad countries are also bad. And get out. I mean, sorry. And, and Mandela is saying, hold on. Every country has their own interests. Every country has their own struggles. Right, but but we have our own interests and, and we are firm in having our own independence and we're not gonna go along with the US's regime change operations and the US's um, spewing of propaganda towards these countries they want to destroy just because the US, you know, allowed uh, for for Mandela and his party to come to power and, and eventually for apartheid to end. Right? Just because the US supported the end of apartheid doesn't mean that we're gonna be imperialist puppets is what Nelson Mandela is saying here incredibly articulately. Which, by the way, I'm sure uh, U.S. leaders were watching this closely, right? Watching this new leader of South Africa and thinking, well, is he going to go along with imperialism or not, right? Because whatever, you know, if they end apartheid, the U.S. ruling class is okay with that. As long as they don't put in power some socialist leader who wants independence and isn't going to help the U.S. launch regime change efforts all across Africa. Um, so you know U.S. US policymakers are watching this closely, um, and, and he was sticking it to them. Yasser Arafat, Colonel Gaddafi. Also, how hypocritical and obnoxious is it for a western journalist to to criticize someone for supporting yasser arafat yasser arafat's a, a palestinian right and and he's involved in constant fighting because the u.s has been arming israel as they enforce an apartheid and an illegal occupation and annexation um, which has caused 75 percent of palestinian people to be refugees and is you know made it one of the most violent places on the planet but we're allowed to support that that's totally okay. We're allowed to not only support that, but give them um, funding and, and weapons. Uh, but if he supports someone fighting against that, all of a sudden, whoa, you're evil, man. It's insane hypocrisy. So back to what he was saying about Arafat and Gaddafi. Fidel Castro, support our struggle to the hilt. There is no reason whatsoever why we should have any hesitation about hailing their commitment to human rights as they are being demanded in South Africa. Our attitude is based solely on the fact that they fully support the anti-apartheid struggle. They do not support it only in rhetoric. They are placing resources at our disposal. So that's basically an argument for materialism, too. Saying not j they don't just support us with words, with flowery words, which, you know, is a shot at the U.S. That's what the West does. But they're supporting us materially. They are giving us resources, something which the Western Empire would never do because they would never give away free resources or free labor. They're focused on the extraction of resources to enrich themselves rather than the mutual cooperation that countries like Cuba are focused on. For us to win this fight. That is the position. President. And you're talking to the person who ended apartheid and you're saying, you know, ending apartheid is good. But how could you support Fidel Castro? Like, do you know what Fidel Castro did in Cuba? Do you know how life changed for Afro-Cubans and, and for indigenous Cuban people after the revolution? They basically ended slavery. They had these giant sugar and tobacco plantations worked, or I mean, owned by wealthy landowners where Afro-Cubans and indigenous Cuban people would work almost like feudal peasants or slaves non-stop for for no money and you know they could be left behind or fired at any moment and and forced into starvation and poverty and after the revolution they abolished that they abolished what was essentially slavery but that's not okay you know you're not allowed to be friends with fidel castro because he did that like the hypocrisy of imperialism is insane because 
the more good a country does and the more a country is able to defend themselves from the exploitation and the destabilization efforts of the u.s empire the more the u.s empire puts out propaganda about that country and about those people and Cuba and Fidel are a great example. There's, you know, never-ending mountains of absurd propaganda about Cuba, and the CIA tried to kill him, like, over 200 times, some absurd amount of times, um, because they've been so successful at combating the U.S. empire, and they're literally an island, like, right off the coast of Florida. Um, so that enrages the U.S. Uh, and forces them to uh, put out propaganda about Cuba and also challenge other world leaders and say, who are you, you know, in, in a forum like that, who are you going to support, Nelson Mandela? Are you going to support the U.S. empire in their efforts to destabilize Libya and Cuba? Or are you going to support Libya and Cuba in their, their efforts to uh, develop themselves and create a trade policy and a foreign policy of mutual development? And Mandela said, I choose mutual development. U.S. And then the U.S. made a movie about him with Morgan Freeman that mostly focused on uh, football. I don't. I don't remember if that movie was good or not. What was the name of it? It was like Invincible or something. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Nelson Mandela movie. Invictus. Not Invincible. It was called Invictus. It was directed by Clint Eastwood, who's like a hardcore Republican. <laughs> Isn't Matt Damon like a Republican, too? Why were they directing Nelson Mandela's movie? Also, both American white men... Like, doing a movie... I mean, obviously, Matt Damon was just an actor, so less him, but, like... Clint Eastwood, was he really the best choice to direct a movie about the struggle against apartheid in South Africa? Clint Eastwood? That dude says, like, a hundred racial slurs in the movie Gran Torino alone. <laughs> like, that's probably not the best choice there, guys. Notable racist. Yeah, he's pretty freaking right wing i'm pretty sure him and nelson mandela would not have been like really good friends <laughs>